So Playboy Cardi announces his album and drops satanic, blatantly satanic merchandise. So what? Hey guys, FLF here. And um, as we kind of get into this video, I do want to talk about this topic because it's a topic that really hits home for me because I'm constantly, I'm that guy from the bleachers, especially if you follow me on social media. I'm, you know, trying not to, but I, I tend to shout down things that I see that are blatantly occultic or satanic or whatever the case might be. And this is the first time where someone else has beat me to the punch, right? The general public, which is pretty surprising, has beat me to the punch and calling out what is clearly satanic and what is clearly occultic um, merchandise and um, imagery from an artist. Now, the crazy part about it is that this is not just like Christians. Obviously, I'm a Christian. I have Christian friends. It's not just them. It's actually the general public who, in most cases, are kind of blind to this kind of stuff. So it's crazy to see. And that's why I wanted to make this video because it might be a little clickbaity, but I'm asking so what because this has been happening for a while with a ton of different artists. You know, Playboy Cardi is definitely not the first. I'm sure he won't be the last. And hip hop has a history with this kind of thing. So I want to dive into a little bit of what's been happening in the last five years, the artists that have rose to prominence, why this shouldn't be surprising, and why we should look out for more of this in the future and take action um, about what we watch, what we take in, especially the music we listen to. So to give it all some context, Playboy Cardi is a rapper. He's been pretty dormant the last two years from what I understand since 2018. Hasn't dropped a lot of music. And he announced his album, Whole Lot of Red, I think in 2018, but really revealed that it was coming out very soon in the past couple of weeks. He's had a rollout where he's kind of doing a lot of um, gothic type imagery, fangs, like vampire looks, red hair. Um, a whole lot of red, obviously the immediately thing I think of is like, you know, Bloods, uh, maybe it's gang affiliation, maybe not, I'm not sure. But um, with that being said though, when he announced the project, he came out with the album cover, which is um, I think the first thing that caught people's attention. So the album cover itself is very reminiscent on um, this old magazine called Slash Magazine, which was really popular in like 1970, I think to 1980, and was like the underground punk scene magazine for LA at the time. So he's paying homage to that. But what stood out, I think, to a lot of people is that he's wearing an upside down cross. And if you know anything about like, I don't know, witchcraft or black magic, they usually take a positive symbol and positive Christian symbols or religious symbols and pervert them in some way. And often this is with the upside down cross. What really riled people up wasn't so much the album cover. It was actually the merchandise that he dropped. So if you check out the merchandise that he dropped on his website, I mean, there's pentagrams, pentagram keychains, T-shirts. Um, upside down crucifixes with Jesus on it. So, you know, that whole idea of it being Peter's cross, well, Jesus is actually on it flipped upside down. Um, coffins with upside down crosses on them. I mean, really blatantly satanic, occultic, um, gothic stuff. And, you know, some people could kind of argue that it's for the aesthetic, but I mean, it seems super intentional the way that he's doing it. Another thing that makes it seem very intentional is the fact that he's dropping it on Christmas day. Now, people usually associate Christmas as a Christian holiday for the most part. It's really a secular holiday in a lot of ways, but people usually associate it with the birth of Christ and all that stuff. Um, so the fact that he's dropping it on Christmas day, is also kind of a, a slap in the face to an extent, given the imagery that's already been put out for the album. And this is a big album. This is probably gonna be the last big hip hop release of 2020. It's got Kid Cudi on it, Kanye West on it, a ton of artists on it that are really prominent and really popping. So the fact that everything is kind of calculated in this way, I think is done to you know get a rise out of people obviously and have a shock value but I do think there's an underlying message behind it as well while I can't get too deep into this Christmas December 25th is really the winter solstice and this has very deep pagan roots as well and it's actually the nativity of the sun right not s-o-n but s-u-n and if you look into this you'll learn more about this it's called Sol Victus but essentially they would celebrate this because on the 24th or the 25th is when the sun would start coming out more during the day. It wouldn't be so dark during the day. So again, maybe there's a an application there. Maybe it's not just to kind of jab at Christians, but the fact that he's dropping on this day is pretty significant as well. 
So naturally people seeing this reacted in a very adverse way and from what I understand it not being a fan of Playboy Cardi, never really listening to his music, this is kind of left field for him as well. From what I've been seeing, even his fans are confused, they don't really get it, this is not the aesthetic he had before, and he's kind of been dormant for the last couple of years, and maybe that's the reason why it's even more shocking. But again, the question I pose to everybody is, so what, right? This has been happening for a long time, what makes this moment any different from past moments? So as I dive into this, I do want to make a couple things clear. First, I am totally against this imagery, I'm totally against what it represents, even even if the intentions are not negative or malicious, which I think they are, even if they're not, I'm definitely against this. And I don't advocate for anybody to listen to this music, to buy this merchandise, or to spend any time on it whatsoever, aside from maybe covering it in this video or sharing it and revealing the truth to other people. The second thing I wanna hit on is when I talk about some of the things that have happened in the last five, 10 years with hip hop, and really what hip hop's origins have looked like involving the satanic and occultic stuff, People that have passed away are going to come up and I'm not looking to defame them or trash their image. I'm just calling it for what it is. And honestly, if these people were still alive, I'm sure that they would um, agree with me that the that the imagery that they use is very intentional and they're not looking to hide anything by it. So as we kind of go through some of this, just keep that in mind. I'm not looking to defame anybody or deface anybody. I just want to be very clear and call a spade a spade. So right along the rise of this kind of occultic, satanic themed imagery, We've seen a lot of a lot of interesting things happen. One I think is the attention of the audience has really shifted towards a younger and younger and younger demographic. People now have more access to music than they've ever had before with YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora. I mean really the options are endless. So the audience has become much much broader and people can really sink into this. This isn't to say music wasn't accessible before but now it's even more accessible than it ever has been. So there is an element of like, what is the message that's going along with this imagery to these audiences that are receiving it? I think probably the first thing that I can notice right away is a lot of drug use, depression, suicide, sex. I mean, these are things that have kind of always existed in hip hop, but not so much the depression, the suicide, and not so much the drug use. Usually we would glorify the drug dealer, and now we're glorifying the drug user. And this has been a conversation happening a lot, especially with like prescription opioids. It used to just be like weed, right? And you would deal certain drugs. Um, and now it's gotten to the point where people are taking full-blown Oxycontin, um, you know, which is essentially synthetic heroin and uh, was glorifying it really. And this younger and younger audience is eating it up in a lot of ways. So let me start off and kick off with some of these artists that are very prominent who use this exact same satanic occultic imagery in their music and their albums and their music videos and I feel like a lot of people have turned a blind eye to it. The first one and maybe the most blatant one, maybe the most obvious one is Lil Uzi Vert. Even in the name Lil Uzi Vert, Uzi Vert it sounds like Lucifer, right? <laughs> There's no denying this Lil Uzi Vert Lucifer, right? It is very blatantly um, what he's trying to get across. and. He's, I've seen interviews where he's wearing an upside down pentagram, upside down crosses, multiple, and people be like, you know, how do you feel about X, Y, Z, whether it's, com you know, compassion for somebody, how they, you know, if he's hurting people, if he's affecting people, and he said, look at what I'm wearing, you know, I don't care about that, right? So this isn't like something he's hiding at all. And if his music videos, for example, heavily satanic and occultic themes, very much dealing with suicide, depression, one of his most popular songs is about how he wants to die right now. Uh, drug use uh, in his, one of his music videos he has Arabic writing at the bottom which is captions for his song lyrics but they're written left to right which Arabic is written right to left so when when that's written left to right that's actually how many people practice witchcraft and how they write spells is left to right using Arabic so some of these things obviously maybe take a slight amount of research but if you look at it and you kind of take that perspective of like, okay, what kind of message am I getting here? It's very clear what the overall theme is and what he's trying to get across. Another prominent artist who unfortunately passed away was Juice World, but on all his merch, his album, his song content, um, 666 over a lot of it. By the way, Lil Uzi Vert has a song on one of his albums called 444 plus 222. I mean, so blatant, right? Very, very blatant stuff. But Juice World, the same thing with his merch, 666. A lot of um, occultic imagery, satanic imagery. 
Another one is Triple X Extension. People might know him. Uh, one of his most prominent songs when he was starting to blow up on SoundCloud was I Met the Devil in Miami and he told me everything's going to be okay. I mean, that, sound, that, that song title right there is enough to make me go, whoa, what's going on here, right? But people don't necessarily know about that. Another song is That Boy's Got Black Eyes. If you listen to what he's talking about in a lot of his music, the same kind of thing and a lot of references uh, to satanic and occultic themes as well. And unfortunately, this is another guy that passed away. Um, the other artist I wanted to talk about, Lil Peep, another guy who passed away. And whether these, whether these situations are intentional, I don't think any of these guys that have died committed suicide. I could be way wrong here, but I don't think what they did was intentional. I think it was an accident. And even with Triple X, he talked about being a sacrifice. I don't know. You know, th that could probably be its own video, right? But Lil Peep was another one who had a ton of satanic and occultic imagery. And in multiple of his songs, he talks about meeting with Satan. Satan's waiting for him at his gate. I mean, this is like blatant stuff. You know, if, if he really wasn't about that or if he really wasn't trying to incorporate that message, there's ways that you could say certain things. Being an artist myself, I know I could say certain things and omit words or omit things that I don't really want to put in there. So him putting it in there to me indicates that he really is about that. Um, and I think, again, if it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Uh, the Weeknd is another one. Um, his most recent album, I believe Starboy was the name of it. If you watch the video and listen to the lyrics, occultic themes all throughout, upside down crosses, the story is the story of him selling his soul. If you really take the blinders off and you kind of lose the luster and the mystique of the excitement of maybe the music or how good it sounds or how great the video looks, you start to see what they're really trying to communicate. And honestly, I get it. You know, this is, you know, these artists are usually putting out great music, right? Great sounding music. But we also need to keep in mind as Christians and maybe not from the world standpoint, but as Christians, Lucifer led the worship of God, right? Like he was second, the, the most second beautiful, most second um, prominent being in all of creation. So if there's anyone that knows how to enrapture and entertain, which means to capture your attention for a long time and hold it, it's going to be him. Of course, though, this has been going on for years and years. Hip hop has a long history of this. Jay-Z, for example, has been calling himself Hova for a number of years, which is a short way to say Jehovah, right? Which is to say God, right? He's been wearing 5% chains, which, you know, the 5 percenters actually believe that they are gods themselves. He's worn clothing and had his clothing brand printed with do what thou wilt, which is a Lester Crowley's famous phrase who was considered the most wicked man alive. Ab Soul had an album after the same title, do what thou wilt. Um, I mean, these are not things that have been veiled, right? DMX has had um, a series of songs called Damien where he talks about his relationship with the devil and how he sold his soul and how the devil put him in the right spot at the right time. This guy, Damien, this character, Damien. So these are not things that are brand new. These are things that have existed for a long time in the culture. Um, artists like Eminem even and Post Malone are prominent and have been pushing this for a while, guys. So the veil has been a little bit more heavily laid but overall the message the theme everything has been there for a long time so again i kind of ask so what right playboy cardi comes out with this satanic merch why do we care at this point point? and i think there's a couple things we can learn from this and maybe if we are willing to just kind of take a step back and look at the whole picture and revisit some of the things that we're listening to or some of the things that we're doing we could probably appreciate exactly what's happening and why it's happening the way it is so I think there's a few reasons that people are recognizing this now. The most relevant reason that I could think of is probably because of how blatant this is. At a certain point, you can attribute things to aesthetic or design or culture. But in this case, it's really hard to do that. It seems like the imagery is blatantly satanic, blatantly occultic. So where do you go from there, right? And I think the other reason is people are starting to wake up and notice more of this stuff and, and take stock of it, you know, and be mindful of the things that they consume. You know, when Netflix has shows like Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which has literal satanic imagery in it, satanic statues, people are starting to wake up to be like, okay, this isn't really what, this really isn't what I should be watching or, or what I should be consuming. And the same is true with music. I think another reason is that people are getting more woke and as time goes on and as concepts evolve, people are starting to take stock in what other people are saying and really what the world looks like at more than a surface level. And especially when an artist like Playboy Cardi goes dormant for two years and then he comes out with this whole new image and this whole new look, it could be his own doing, 
but chances are it's the cultural elites that are doing it. These record labels, these teams around people that are coaching them and manipulating them to get the outcome that they want, which is to sell a lot of records. So the Bible is pretty clear on how we should steward these things. And I want to give you a couple of verses to end this on a note that we can walk away from and keep these things in mind. And I'll put it up on the screen as well. But Psalm 101, two through four, I will behave wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk with my house with a perfect heart. I will set nothing wicked before mine eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall depart from me. I will know not wickedness. It's powerful to see what's happening there in that in that scripture where it's talking about, you know, I will walk righteously. I will not put wicked things before my eyes. It's really a call for us as well to take those steps in that right direction, because when we listen to these things and this could be a video in itself. Right. But there are demons in there. There are spells being put on people in a major way. And, and whether it's literal, whether it's through magic, which I believe it is, it is rewiring your brain and it is affecting you in a physical, real, tangible way. Another verse that I think we should look at is Acts 19.19. 19. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. So I see two things happening there. One, people are willing to sacrifice these things that are valuable because they know they're evil and they're not of God, which is incredible, right? 50,000 pieces of silver is a lot, is a lot. Jesus was sold for 30, right? So 50,000 pieces of silver, they're making that sacrifice because they want to grow with the Lord. And on top of that, when that barrier was removed, they were able to grow with the Lord. So this music, these TV shows you watch, the things that you might be consuming, that could be building a barrier between you and the Lord. And that's why his voice is, at times is hard to hear and hard to understand and hard to interpret because you've built up and you filled the gap at the void between you and him with all this other noise that's clouding that signal. Like I said from the jump, this isn't about what you listen to or who you listen to, but about what kind of messages you take in and really what kind of effect it's going to have on your relationship with God. So I hope you guys pray on this. I hope you guys really take it seriously and please don't listen to that album because you don't know what he's putting in there and he's making it clear from the jump who he's rocking with. Hey again, it's FLF. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, like this video and share it with somebody who might be blessed. God bless and thank you for your support.